January to dire, uh, directing hospitals to delay non-urgent surgeries in an effort to help the overload of the health care system. Joining us to talk more about what it's like to get one of those surgeries in the current COVID climate is Dr. Anishka Golian. Did I get that name right, doctor? Absolutely. Spot on. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Well, score one for me. Thank you very much for, <laughs> for getting up so early. Let's start off uh, back, compare, uh, oh, what a difference a year makes. When the first wave of COVID hurt or hit and hurt, it, uh, it shut down operations as far as elective surgeries were concerned. And that went on for a while. It became an issue. Now uh, that we're on wave three, are we doing elective surgeries? Um, well, yes and no. Um, that's the short answer. Um, first of all, uh, there's, there's a two-part answer to that question, really. One is um, whether you, or not you can have elective surgery, and I want to define elective surgery because um, it's, it's something that you need to have. Uh, however, it's not a surgery for a condition that's a constant immediate threat to your life uh, in the next 24 hours. Um, so whether or not the hospitals uh, can schedule your surgery that's defined as elective surgery, uh, it's uh, dependent on um, a, a, grading, a graded scale, acuity scale, um, basically that's set forth by the California Department of Health. And that's two factors to that scale. One is how bad is your condition, the severity of your illness, and two is Will your surgery require you to have a post-operative stay in the hospital requiring a hospital bed overnight? Um, so that's how we grade, currently grade, um, hospitals grade any surgery to deem whether you're eligible to have that surgery uh, completed. Is that a hospital decision or is that a state of no. California decision? No, that's a state of California uh, decision. Um, you know, we as hospitals, we're always very much uh, committed in, um, in taking care of as much of our uh, local community and patients um, as possible. And um, it's, yeah, we certainly have restrictions that are set forth by the Department of Health and not the hospitals. Or let's take a patient who's in excruciating pain from say, needs a hip replacement. Where does that rank on your meter? So currently, a week ago, you wouldn't be able to, for example, have the surgery completed um, because we, again, had a complete pretty much shutdown of all surgery except for uh, emergency cancer-related type of surgery. Currently, you would be able to have that surgery um, done with one caveat. Uh, we really are still limited in terms of the number of hospitals beds for a post-operative stay. So what we would do is um, uh, we would uh, attempt to, or we, our plan would be to have you go home the same day. And as you can imagine, that takes quite a bit of planning uh, to be able to complete that. So if you were to come in, uh, before you even come in, we would uh, have you do a COVID test 72 hours prior to the surgery. And the reason for that is um, we now know that unless it's an emergency surgery, operating on someone who's COVID positive, even without any symptoms, leads to worse outcomes and more complications postoperatively. So you would have that has done, you would have to be negative. Uh, you would come in the day of surgery, you would be wearing a mask, you'd be wearing a mask throughout your hospital stay. Um, unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to have you have a family member or loved one come in with you as we would in the past to support you in the preoperative period. And so because of all these things here at Coronado Hospital, we really had to look at how can we further support our uh, patients going through this already anxiety provoking process. Um, so what we typically do is we'd have you come in the day of surgery, you'd have your own room, you would have your own dedicated uh, nurse who would only be taking care of you. She's not taking care of any other patients. You would have relaxing music playing. You would have warming blankets. You would even have aromatherapy um, in the room uh, to sort of ease your anxiety. And we would plan for after the surgery so that uh, we do a couple other things so that make sure we can have you on your feet with your brand new hip the same day of the surgery, walking about with your physical therapist, preparing to go home in a, a few hours shortly thereafter. So well, as you can imagine. How grim is the availability right now? If I if I were to walk into your IC unit, unit would I be stepping over bodies to get to? <laughs> or, or I mean, because we hear animals. such discrimin or uh, differing yeah. points of view. Yeah. No, Some people say it's always busy this time of year. Uh, yeah, no, this is definitely the next level. Uh, you wouldn't be stepping over beds unless you're climbing into the beds, and then you you might be. But um, yes, the, the hospital, the ICU beds are pretty full, uh, truthfully. So um, that's definitely something that we're constantly evaluating in the hospital, making sure that um, as we're taking in new patients, we have a, a good way and safe way to care for them. 
And, and just quickly, when, when people are going into these ICU units with COVID-19, how long are they pre uh, predominantly staying for? It's a protracted stay. You know, some people do really well. Others take weeks and weeks. Um, so, yes, that's definitely, it's not like people are coming in for acute condition and getting better and, and leaving and emptying that bed. So that's a great question. Yes, that's a, a constant, constant struggle that we have to well, Dr. Gullion, uh, you and all your health care providers are the heroes of this story. We uh, appreciate your fine work, and we appreciate you making time for us at this bright hour in the morning. Uh, a pleasure. We wish you a safe day. Thank you, too. All right. Local attractions.